a masterclass on documentary photography turned her into a self-described humanitarian photojournalist. I think just um, the human condition is just about connecting people to each other, showing people how other people live in different parts of the world. You know, I feel that social documentary uh, photography especially, it can make the world a better place by introducing things that other people otherwise would not see. The work has taken her to more than 40 countries, including Kenya, where she documented the toll of human trafficking, encouraging victims reluctant to be identified to pose in profile or in masks. I wanted them to be able to use this time to feel empowered and feel brave about sharing their story. People, you know, they don't want to talk about trafficking. It's uncomfortable. But uh, if you do it in an artistic and an, uh, an artful way, it becomes a little softened, you know. Uh, it provokes people to engage in these kinds of conversations through art. <laughs> She has documented wildlife and the rangers who protect it from the ravages of poachers in Uganda and Kenya. Animals and the environment under pressure on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. And the beauty of Namibia. So that project was basically about spirituality and just finding beauty in places that are very vast. I feel N Namibia is like a dreamland. Uh, and so I was looking for just uh, creating just beautiful, peaceful pictures. Her weeks of travel are challenging, and many of the trips are self-funded. But her dedication to exploring the human condition and spirit drives the work, as well as the opportunity to reveal painful, often inconvenient truths about the world around us. It's really rewarding. I mean, the, the goal of what I'm trying to do is really inform people, uh, creating awareness through the work, but also trying to provoke these kinds of conversations, thoughtful conversations. And then in the end, I want to inspire people to take action. Seamus has displayed her work on the Social Documentary Network, an online gallery for documentary photographers. The class that inspired her was taught by the site's founder and director, Glenn Ruga. People love stories. That, that's the core. I mean, people really like to learn about the world through various types of storytelling, and documentary photography is one way of doing that. And if it's done well, people will spend the time to engage with it. An accomplished photographer himself, Ruga spent years chronicling the devastation of war in the Balkans and came home to find there were few places for documentary photography on the rapidly evolving World Wide Web. He celebrated the Social Documentary Network's 10th anniversary this year. We're very proud. One statistic we like to cite is that in those 10 years, we've had work by more than 2,000 photographers from all parts of the world that have presented 3,000 stories on very diverse themes. In 2015, Ruga also founded Zeek, a magazine of global documentary, to move the work from the digital world to the physical world of paper. One of the things we really try to do in the magazine is to show the photographs as large as we can, and it's, it's quite different than looking at that same photograph you know, this big on your phone or, or seeing it 17 inches across. A self-employed graphic designer by day, Ruga's commitment to the site and the magazine is about creating an outlet for photographic work and also teaching and inspiring others who may be interested in the genre. The first thing is that they should pursue a project that really interests them. There's nothing that's going to lead towards a more successful project than something the photographer has passion and then learn as much as they can about the subject. It's not just taking the pictures, but it's understanding what this means. And by researching history and culture, it gives everybody a deeper understanding of what this is all about. <laughs>